Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their September of 2016 premiere auction. The one specifically I'm taking a look at today is this Beretta 1918-30 semi-auto submachine gun carbine thing. From a developmental standpoint, this is interesting because it it's really shares features of both the submachine gun families that came before it, the Beretta Model of 1918 based on the Villa Perosa, and the submachine guns that would come after it, the Beretta Model 38 family. Uh, all, of, all three of these were designed by the same guy, Tullio Marangoni at Beretta, and this is a neat intermediary between the two. Now it's also interesting from a legal point of view because it's kind of got this weird combination of features. It is a semi-automatic only submachine gun. Well. Not really a submachine gun, I suppose, because it's not full auto, but Beretta at the factory built this as, from the ground up, as only a semi-automatic rifle. And these were marketed largely to police forces as a, because of that. So, again, because of that, under U.S. law, it's not a machine gun. It's not a converted submachine gun. It was built this way from the beginning. Now, it also has a rather short barrel. This is uh, 12 and 3 quarter inches long which is, of course, less than the U.S. minimum of 16 inches. However, because there are very few of these around and they have this interesting historical value, uh, they are actually specifically exempted from the NFA by the ATF. So you can, despite the short barrel, you can own this without any particular paperwork or tax stamps, which is cool. And just to be extra cool, they threw a little short folding bayonet on there as well. Now these were used in small numbers by, I believe it was the Italian Forestry Militia, um, more significantly, they were also used by the Argentine police forces. Um, I know Buenos Aires, I'm not sure if it was federal police forces or just um, individual city or state police forces, but they were popular down there, and a lot of the ones that came into the United States actually came back in through Argentina when the guns were surplused. So why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at this one. We'll pull the bolt out because it's kind of unusual for what is basically a submachine gun bolt, and uh, yeah, we'll take a look at how it works. Admit it, you want to see the bayonet. We'll start with the bayonet. It's a spring-loaded locking tab here. Folds out, snaps into place. Kind of short. That's something like six, maybe eight inches. Uh, don't know that that would ever be particularly useful, but I suppose if you've got riot police using these things, that'll at least give them a little bit of a, a pokey on the end to keep people back a little bit. Folds underneath. This is exactly the same uh, style of bayonet you would find on an, uh, an Italian Carcano uh, cavalry carbine, which would have been contemporary to these submachine gun rifles. Next up, we'll take a look at the magazine. Now, the original 1918 Berettas were all based on Villa Perosa receivers, and they had magazines that were actually fitted up on the top of the gun, ejecting out the bottom. For the 1918-30, Marangoni reversed that. Put the magazine on the bottom, which really makes more sense for a submachine gun or carbine. We have a little uh, catch right back here. Allows us to pull the magazine out. It's just a straight-in magazine. And then we have this cool little dust cover that closes over that, so it keeps dirt out of the gun. One might wonder, though, because the magazine itself has a big open slot right on the front to let that dirt conveniently back in. Uh, in theory, I guess it also allows you to see how much ammunition you have. This feature is a holdover from the Villa Perosa and the 1918 submachine guns, which shared that feature. This is, however, a different magazine uh, designed from scratch for these guns. It is a single feed. It's a double stack in here, but presents only a single cartridge uh, to feed from, where the Villa Perosa used a, uh, a double feed magazine, where you had both rounds coming up side by side. This particular one is a 25-round magazine. They also had 12-round uh, magazines that were sold and issued with the guns. The 12-rounder's advantage, of course, that is that it's a lot shorter out of the way. Now, the safety on these is actually very similar to what the Germans would use later on in some of their last-ditch guns. It's a very simple switch. And all this safety does is prevent you from pulling the trigger back. So you can see a little uh, cutout right there. When you engage the safety like that, the trigger is now sitting on that latch. You can't pull it back because it hits this piece of metal. When you disengage the safety like that, now the trigger can move backwards. Pretty simple. 
if we look at the top of the gun, you'll see it's, it's a nice clean-sided receiver. This is another departure from the 1918 submachine guns, although the bolt handle would return with the Model 38. What Marangoni tried on this gun was to actually give it a big ring at the back, and that functions as the bolt handle. I can pull it back there. It does lock open when it's empty, uh, whether you've got a magazine in it or not, interestingly enough. This, which looks like a fire selector, is actually your bolt release. Ow, there we go. Easy to get your finger kind of stuck in this thing if you do it wrong. Uh, interestingly, uh, Italian troops uh, would refer to this gun colloquially as the syringe because of that big loop handle, which makes it look... I suppose when you combine that with the sharp point on the end, it does kind of resemble a syringe. The rear sight is pretty much exactly what you would expect, just a tangent leaf uh, adjustable out to 500 there. 500 uh, meters would be a little bit optimistic with 9mm glissenti ammunition and about a 12 inch sight radius, but there you go. Take a look at the marks on here. Down the top of the receiver we have Pietro Beretta Gardone Val Trompia. That's the Trompia Valley, which is where Gardone is located. Italy, caliber 9mm, and we have, this is indicative of a commercially or police sold gun made in Italy, and then on the back, Brevetto, which is patent, 1918-30, serial number on this is A4475. I think they probably did about 5,000 of these, I haven't seen any serial numbers over about 4,500. Then it's also interesting to note that there's a little bit of decorative work on these guns. There's a little line of scroll work there and a matching one right there, and there's actually one right at the front of the receiver as well. There's that decorative line right at the front. Now to disassemble this, very simple, all I have to do is unthread the back of the receiver, which will take me a few minutes here, this is long and slow. Alright, all the way unscrewed. This is one of those cool guns that will never go sproing and spontaneously shoot a spring across the room, because the bolt and the recoil spring are captive. So here we have the bolt. This looks like a submachine gun bolt except for a few details. It does not have a fixed firing pin. You can actually see the back of the firing pin right there. It's uh, a spring-loaded uh, floating firing pin. And then there's this big mill cutout right in the middle of the bolt. Now that normally in a submachine gun you might think well they, they milled out that material to lighten the bolt and increase the rate of fire. In this case however that is actually there to allow a hammer, a location, a place, to swing up inside the bolt and hit the firing pin. Because this isn't just an open bolt, fires when it slams shut type of gun. This fires from a closed bolt, closes, then waits till you pull the trigger for the hammer to hit the firing pin there. Now when the bolt reciprocates backwards, they make use of this space for the recoil spring guide rod. See how that's going to compress there. Um, of course, once this thing is moving, the hammer has been recocked and it's sitting down here below the level of the bolt so it doesn't interfere. They did put this red uh, fiber type, or uh, plastic, I'm not entirely sure what that is, uh, buffer on the back of the plug, the, uh, the receiver plug, so that when the bolt bottoms out, it hits that and decelerates it a little more slowly than if it just hit metal and peened. So if we look down inside the receiver, we can actually see the hammer. It's right there, cocked back. I don't want to dry fire because I don't want it to slam into the, the ejector there, but uh, that's, that's where the hammer sits. And then I, now I mentioned this lever here on the side is the bolt release. You can see that moving there. And it is set up in such a way that when you insert a loaded magazine, it will hit the front piece of this lever and trip it automatically, closing the bolt on your new magazine. I do want to point out this is not a safety. Uh, like on, say, Swiss rifles, it doesn't do that. It's just a pull handle for the bolt. And it doesn't matter what way it's rotated, it's not threaded, it's just connected to the mainspring guide rod. So whatever is comfortable for you, you can pull it from the side, from the top, whatever you like. All right, when I lock the bolt open like that, which interestingly leaves this charging handle back, and push it forward, I suppose. Then we open up the cover slot there, take our magazine, and by the way, this open slot is forward. And when I load the magazine in, it closes the bolt automatically for me. So there you go, one Beretta police carbine from the 30s. 
Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. These are really neat little carbines. Um, I would once again remind you not to shoot 9mm Parabellum in these if you have one or if you get this one. These are designed for 9mm Glycenti, and you really need to download a 9mm cartridge to match that power, or else you will eventually damage or destroy the gun. So, uh, that being said, I'm sure they would be fantastically comfortable shooters with a slightly underpowered 9mm round in a carbine. You've got nice sights, nice hold to it. I bet these would be really fun shooters. Uh, if you'd like to find out firsthand, well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this little carbine and uh, you can place a bid online or via telephone or come up here to Rock Island and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching.